Hello everyone, welcome back. We're doing a uh, two days after shooting uh, analysis. So this was my second time uh, shooting a thousand yards. Um, so not, I've shot like 800 yards before, uh, but it's my second time like specifically going there with the intention of shooting a thousand yards. And uh, what uh, the thing that like stands out most in my mind is the magnification. The, what magnification um, was most useful for getting hits at a thousand yards. So uh, I was using this Palmetto AR-10. This is the PA-10 Gen 3, and the scope is 5 to 25. Okay. The first time I shot a thousand yards, I don't remember what magnification I was in, but this time I do. Okay. Uh, and it wasn't 25. It was actually 10 magnification. Okay. So why did I dial back to 10 magnification? Um, I mean, there's no question that I could see the target better at uh, at 25 magnification. Okay, and it was a bright day. There was no, you know, you know, there was it was, you know, it, it, it was a bright day, windy, but 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 bright. Um, so yeah, at 25, I could see the target way way better. But the problem is that in 25 magnification, I couldn't spot the impacts in the dirt. Okay, for the wind adjustments. Okay, because uh, it was a windy day. I had a strong wind coming in, uh, and you know it was like sometimes pushing left, sometimes pushing right. Um, so what I basically what I needed to do is spot the impacts on my mill grid, and then use that as my new uh, holding point. Okay, and those those impacts were outside of my field of view when I was in 25 magnification. Um, and well, it, and it wasn't just a field of view because. Uh, you also have to factor in the recoil, okay? Because here's the thing: when I'm in, I mean, I had no trouble controlling the recoil of this AR-10, even without a mu muzzle brake. Um, but when I'm, let's say, in 10 magnification, and that recoil happens, I mean, I, you know, I don't come off target, okay? When I'm in 25 ma magnification, right? You know, because the in 25 power, you got a super tight eye box that recall regardless how well you can control it uh is going to throw you out of the scope okay uh you, you're going to see shadow you're going to you're not going to see the uh the impact so what i found is that by I, I tried going back to 20 and still the um the uh the scope was I mean, the rifle was recalling enough so that i lost on the recall i lost um the view of the target okay uh but when i came back to 10 magnification the eye box opened up enough uh so even with that same recoil uh i could basically stay on the target throughout the whole shot through the recoil and i could spot the impact and then i could make the correction okay um so that's the that's that's interesting so uh, as far as how much magnification do you need to hit a thousand yards i mean right now i would say 10 magnification which uh, you know so here's the thing, like here I got like a 1 to 10 uh, first focal plane, it was a GLX scope. Um, I, you know, if I, like I plan to, this is a 20 inch AR-10, in the future I'm going to probably build out a 16 inch AR-10. I'm not putting a 5 to 25 uh, scope on that. I'm going to probably put this 1 to 10 uh, because that 1 to 10 is uh you know we'll get the job done you'll be able to spot your impact your impacts and stay on target through the recoil um you know i mean i mean yeah there's other things that you could do maybe put a muzzle brake that might get you uh you know be able to go up a little bit in magnification i don't like the i don't, I don't like the noise that muzzle brakes make okay it's just it's just a little too annoying for me uh, not that i can't shoot i just don't enjoy shooting as much so i prefer shooting just a, a regular bird cage um it's more enjoyable for me so it makes sense to me uh, to, uh, to uh, you know, just get scopes that go up to 10 magnification. Now, I mean, there's no question that I can see more with the 25. So if I were doing observation, yeah, it's nice to go up to 25 and you can do observation and you can see. Um, which is the reason why it, it kind of makes sense to have this big, heavy scope, two and a half pounds, right, with the mount on top of this 20-inch AR-10. Because this is basically a dedicated garrison gun okay this gun is like stationary this is not something you're going to be uh running around with but um i think if you're going to be moving to position 
uh, yeah, th this scope here is a much better choice. This one to ten, right? This GLX one to ten. I mean, are you gonna wish at times that you had more magnification? Yes, you will. But that that extra magnification really comes at uh, at, at extra weight, okay? Because one thing, um, if you have a scope that goes higher up in magnification, you're kind of committed to having a red dot on it as well. So now you got the the red dot and the red dot mount. So that also adds extra weight uh, and more and more complexity. With this scope here, the, this one to ten, I mean, I don't need the red dot because I can zoom down the one power come up. I lost the paper. Hold on for a second. I'm gonna go get that paper. We didn't need it. Okay. So um. So yeah. So like in in hindsight, um. Yeah. I mean, being able to go all the way up to 25 power, nice. But going, being able, you know, 10 power is all you need to be able to get out to, um, uh, to a thousand yards, spot your impacts, and be able to make quick adjustments and and get on target. So. Next time I build up an AR-10, that's what I'm going to be doing, okay? And I'm going to be using a 16-inch barrel. Um, and I actually did a separate video with, like, because I, I ran this this barrel through, you know, I, I shot this through a chronograph, and I shot a 16-inch uh, through a chronograph to see what the velocity difference is, and I put that into a bullet, uh, into a bullet calc um, a BDC calculator. And what I found is that... Um, it's not a whole lot of difference because at a thousand yards, shooting my 140 say, 147 grain freedom munitions through the 20 inch, I get like something like 300 and uh, um, I think it was like something like like 345 foot pounds of energy, right? So basically, at a thousand yards, the, the the 308 is like a nine millimeter, right? At around 345, and then when I you know, with the velocity on the through the 16 inch barrel, when I ran that through the ballistic calculator, I mean the the energy at a thousand yards, I think it was dropping down to something like like 325 or something. Um, so it was it was really like a small difference. Um, so it's basically at a thousand yards, shooting the six the 20 inch barrel versus the 16 inch barrel, it's kind of like the difference that you're gonna get out of shooting, let's say, a Glock 17 versus a Glock 19 with a slightly shorter barrel okay so um so yeah um yeah I mean I didn't notice all I didn't know this information until like I just you know it's one of those things I had to compile myself um I don't think that there's anybody out there that uh, that that has I mean there's probably bits and pieces here and there but uh I just I haven't seen everything like presented like you know like 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 kind of lumped together in the way that uh is digestible to me okay so having done my own shooting, running this through a chronograph, um, that's where I think the, the ideal AR-10 is. Uh, 16 inch barrel with a one to 10, first focal plane scope on it. Uh, the guns are gonna be lighter, uh, more, more uh, you know, maneuverable, you can move around with it, uh, and you're not giving up that much in, uh, in, in, that much in, uh, in energy downrange. Uh, as far as like distance, uh the the uh basically the bullet out of the 16 inch barrel is going to go subsonic about 50 yards sooner in the 16 inch barrel versus the 20 inch barrel um so again you, you you're losing very much uh, very little i'm sorry uh very little i think um so so that's uh but anyway this is a great gun i mean you gotta start somewhere okay and palmetto is a great place to start because here's the thing uh, I, th this rifle was $700, right? And this scope is an SLX scope, so that was $500. So, you know, I, I didn't spend a whole lot of money, right? You know, it didn't make sense to, you know, like I didn't spend a whole lot of money to figure out that, hey, I would be better off with a with a lighter, shorter AR-10 uh, versus a, um, you know, and also a, a lighter, less magnification scope, okay? Uh, because now the next time I go into this, okay, now I can go in there with a bigger budget uh, because now I kind of know what I'm looking for. Because this is my first AR-10, and this is the first scope with this type of magnification that I've ever worked for, with, okay? Um, so a lot of inter interesting information that I've been discovering going through this, uh, uh, through this process. Uh, so, um, so this is the 1,000 yards I was shooting. So, 
So you basically the hits are one, two, three, four hits with a circle. Yeah. One, two, three, four. Okay. So that's uh these are um that was four out of five hits. Okay, so one of the hits went off target somewhere. Uh, again, I, was, I wasn't I was using match grade ammunition, I was using uh, freedom munitions, and even when I shoot at 100 yards, sometimes when the bullets will open up a little bit, um, so getting 4 out of 5 at 1,000 yards was, for this ammunition, I think is really good. Uh, this group here is 30 inches, so that's, uh, it's nice when you're at 1,000 yards, you just divide by 10, so that's about 3 MOA, 4 out of 5 shots, uh, so that's, uh, you know, I mean, I, I think that's, a, that's, a, that's a, a good place to... To, start, to be starting off with shooting a thousand yards. Now, the first time I did this, I shot I, I shot um, uh, 22, uh, 22 inches, uh, and that was nine out of ten. Uh, but I think the the wind conditions were a, a, maybe a little bit more fair, uh, favorable because this time I had like a really strong wind coming straight into me. Sometimes pushing left, put sometimes pushing right, right. Um, and uh, you know, you you got to spot the impacts because before I started this group. I threw some bullets on the target, and I saw where the impacts were. So I saw that they were going, let's say, I, I don't remember whether they were going right or left on the dirt. Uh, and then basically you just take that dot, and then you transition to the target. Okay? And the holdover uh, at 1,000 yards uh, using a 50-yard a, a zero on a 20 MOA mount was 11.5 11 11 mils uh, on the dial. Okay? Um, now the other interesting thing I was also doing today uh, with regards to scope, I took, I basically put this eye chart out there. Okay, uh, this was at 200 yards, and I um, I looked through it with an, uh, an SLX scope, right? The cheaper primary primary arms SLX scope, which they sell for about $300. Uh, this GLX scope, this one's like an $800 scope. Um, and interesting enough, at 200 yards, right? I could see the the A very clearly, B and C with both of these scopes, right? With the uh, with the SLX, yeah. With the SLX and the uh, uh, and the GLX. All right. Um, I could not see the D, and I could not see the E. Now, when I looked at it through the 25 uh, power scope, I could see the the D and the E. All right, in the 25 power. But I could not see the F. I mean, I just kind of saw it as a little line over here. Um, so the benefit of the 25 power is basically I went from this C here to this E here. Okay, at 200 yards. Um, so so the, the the one to ten and one to eight um, got me up to the C. Couldn't see the D very well. I could see it with the five, with the 25 power, D and E, but then I couldn't see the F. So that's how how much more you're gonna see with with this big bulky scope. So um, <laughs> again, I'm um, my my thoughts at this point are that the um, um, that, that, that the one to ten is kind of like your ideal scope for shooting <clears throat> a thousand yards under a combat type of situation. Let um, me get that paper before it blows away. Let me also say this, that the first two, because I had shot 800 yards uh, with uh, 5.56. Five, this is before I, you know, this is prior to ever trying 1,000 yards. Um, so with the 5.56, um, the five, five, right, when I was shooting it, and I was able to get on target, I think it was something like, I don't remember. I, I, I mean, I, I got hits at 800 yards with 5.56. Five, five, um, but the problem I had with the 556 is that the the bullets right at 800 yards it's really because they're so light and they've lost so much energy um, they're basically landing like 22s it's hard to see the impacts uh, in the dirt and make uh, and make your wind corrections okay um, so that was the 556 at at, uh, at 800 yards so my thinking was that I was at the time I was using a 10 magnification scope right. So my thinking was, hey, all I need, if I had more magnification, uh, I would be able to see those impacts at, at the 800 yards with the 5.56. Well, I did try that, right? I, I put this scope on a 5.56 uh, AR, 
took that to 800 yards. And uh, yeah, I, re I still couldn't spot, spot the impacts. I mean, I did occasionally see the impacts, but uh, with the 5.56, five, they were just so light. I just wasn't, like I had to put lots of bullets before I could like see like impacts consistently in one area and say, okay, I, I know what my wind is. I know where my, my, my holdover is. Um, with the 308, okay, I can be in less magnification. I can be in 10 power. Uh, and I can still pick up the impacts and, and make corrections. So, so my, I mean, it shouldn't be too surprising. I mean, I'm probably not the first to say this, but, but uh, yeah, I mean, five five six will get to 800 yards if you're using 77 grains. You will hit your target. I have a video where, where I'm doing it. Uh, but the problem is that you gotta put lots of bullets out there so that you can like be sure that you see the impact and and have confidence to now transition onto your target. You know. Because basically what I did is I had two magazines, right? I had one magazine that was just like I put into the gun, shoot that until I spot my impacts. Once I know what my holdover is, right, I would take the magazine out, put in another magazine that had nine rounds. So now I had one in the chamber plus nine in the mag, and now I would transition to the paper target, and I would shoot all ten rounds as quickly as I could and still stay on target before the, the wind had a chance to, to, you know, to change too much. So that was shooting 800 yards with the 5.56. Five, um, so, yeah. Shooting uh, with a 308, much much easier because yeah you get, you know forget about what it's going to do to the target you can see the impacts now obviously you have to be in an area that um, has been uh, actually like these ranges have been shot up so that there's not like grass growing and if you're shooting into grass you're not going to spot the impacts right it has to be an area with a dirt background so that when the bullet hits the ground it raises up some dirt some, some like, you know, like a little small a dust cloud. And you can you'll know where the impact. If you're shooting at the grass, you're not going to spot the impacts. Um, and uh, you know it's like a, you know even with the 308, that's that's iffy. It depends on if it's been raining, how hard the ground is. You know, so you know that's the challenge with shooting distance, right? Um, you know, with a lot of unknowns like the wind and you know wind doing weird things. Um, if you can't spot the impacts, you can't make the adjustments. Okay. Now usually if you're working with a spotter. A lot of times the spotter is going to have a scope, you know, because he's he's specifically looking for impacts. He's not worried about, you know, recoil and stuff like that. He's just just looking for impacts, so it does make it uh, easier. If you're shooting by yourself, you know, now you're doing all these other things, like, you know, doing, you know, worrying about, like, your, your positioning, you know, uh, your, your trigger control, try your follow, you know, your follow through, right, trying to stay on target. And then on top of all that, you know, your trigger squeeze, and then on top of all that, trying to spot your impact so that you can make a, a quick adjustment. So, it, you know, the, the workload really adds up very quickly, okay? So, uh, drop some comments below. Let me know what you guys think. I'll talk to you all soon.